Hello everyone, I'll be doing problem 4 from Fintool's homework. Uh, for this problem we are given uh, a block diagram for which we need to condense it and uh, find the steady state error for the system. Um, to do this, uh, we are given inputs where we have step, ramp and parabola uh, for our inputs. and to condense the system, what I am going to use, I'm going to use the flow diagram Mason's rule method to do this. So uh, to do this, uh, simply have um, a straight line. This is going to represent your forward path. And in your forward path, you're going to mark uh, these points like V1, V2, wherever you see something uh, branches out and connects to another point. Um, for instance, I have V1, which is going to be this point right here where you see this green line going and connecting at this particular point. And then I have V2, which is this point, V3, and C of S. So what you do, uh, for instance, right here after V2, you see you have 1 over S. So you would mark 1 over S uh, for that part of the forward path. Um, and all the blocks that are labeled, uh, as you see in the system, you will just mark them. Um, as for for the for the loops, uh, what you would do is you look at the point where they start from. For instance, this three, a four s, and one uh, starts at the at c of s. So you would go at c of s and go to those particular points where these loops end at. So by the time uh, you have everything that you have on the system labeled in your floor diagram uh, Mason rules um, system like uh, you see here, um, now you can start writing some equations for them to find uh, your Mason's rule. Uh, so we can have this, uh, so we can have uh, a condensed um, equation that we can get out of the system instead of uh, solving for the system. You can do it that way, but um, I think this is a very systematic syst uh, method, so there's very less chance of making a mistake doing it this way. Um, first, uh, you write your forward path, which is going to be 1, which is right here, times 1 of s, times 2 over s plus 3. Your second forward path is going to be 1, and as you see this line going over, so you're going to have um, 1 again, and then 2 over s plus 3. So that's going to be your second forward path. Now, we don't have anything else going around on, on the, uh, in, in the direction of c of s, so we don't have any more forward paths. Now, uh, let's label our individual loops, uh, and to do that, what's this? Okay, so for our individual loops, you're going to have two loops, and I'll explain you why. For the first loop, you're going to have this big one. Now, for the loop, you're going to think of it in this way, that when you start from uh, one point, it should make um, like a circle. I know it's not a complete circle, but think about that the point you're starting at, that it, it kind of makes... Um, uh, like a U-turn or uh, it, it comes back to the same point and that's going to be your loop. So if you look here, uh, it's basically your forward path that you already had. So it's going to be 1, 1 over S times 2 over S plus 3. And at C of S, we're going to take this bigger loop, uh, which is negative 1, and it comes back to our input point, which is R of S. So that's going to be, uh, you can say that as your first loop. Now for the second loop, um, we're going to have 1, 1 over s, and then you have 2 times s plus 3, and it goes to 4 of it, 4s. So as you see right here, it goes back to 4s. Now, third loop, as you may be thinking, like, well, why aren't we using this? Well, the reason you can't use this is because of this loop right here which is a forward path loop, and if you see that it, uh, it uh, contradicts uh, the rule that we learned uh, doing Mason's rule, uh, which means that we cannot have this um, as an individual loop. 
Um, once you do that, then you would have to know your non-touching loops. As you can see in this flowchart, all of your loops are touching the forward path. So that means we're not going to have a non-touching loop because all of them are touching the forward path. So our del1, del2 is going to be equal to 1. And once we have all this information, um, you can compute for delta, which is simply 1 minus the sum of the individual loops. Uh, plus is going to be the product of your, your non-touching loops, but in this case we don't have any, so it's just 0. Um, and then you do some algebra for this, so after some arithmetic, you would end up with in the numerator s plus 17 and, the, and in the denominator it's going to be s plus 3. Now you have delta and we can find uh, our condensed transfer function uh, by using Mason's rule. So as you know that transfer function is the output over the input um, and in Mason's rule is defined to do that as 1 over delta the sum of the forward path times um, your del1, del2 for your paths. So it's going to be P1, which is forward path 1, times delta 1, plus forward path 2 times delta 2, divided by the delta. And if you substitute the values that we found, uh, you would come up with 2 times s plus 1, divided by s times s plus 17. Now, once you have this um, uh, this form of this for this equation, now you would use the step input functions uh, they gave us in the problem to find out uh, for your steady state error. So first one is going to be our step, which is 15 times u of t. And um, if you look in your book, or if you have a table for your uh, for these values uh, for the step it's k divided by 1 plus the limit when s is approaching 0 for the transfer function uh, and for this uh, part you're gonna have for k you're gonna plug in your 15 and it's gonna be 1 plus uh, the equation that we just found out and if you do that since s is approaching 0 uh, it's going to be infinity and um, a number or a constant divided by infinity we know uh, is 0 so you may be thinking like okay well I have this one here so what about this one well this term which is infinity uh, is is much greater than 1 so we actually neglect 1 and we consider uh, infinity to be our dominant term so 15 divided by infinity 15 divided by infinity is equal to 0 now for the next input which is our going to be ramp input uh, the the formula given for that is k divided by limits when s is approaching 0 for the transfer function and in this case, since it's a RAM function, uh, as you know from your Laplace table properties, it's going to be um, 1 over s. So you have s in the denominator, and that would cancel out the s uh, from uh, this equation that we have here. Um, and you're going to end up with a constant value. Um, and then if you divide this, then you're going to get 127.5. For the parabola, you're going to have um, 2 times k in the numerator, and in the denominator, you have limit when s approaches 0 times s square of g of s. So if you solve this, uh, you get 0 in the denominator because when this s cancels out, you still have this s term laying in the, numerator, in the denominator, which makes the denominator go to 0. and um, a constant divided by zero, like I mean, you're gonna get infinity for that. So uh, that's pretty much it to this problem. Um, thank you. I hope this problem helps you out.